You're good. All right. We're back. Terry and Gary's Low Expectations Podcast, episode 40. And today we have two amazing women, Power Rangers, Nikia Brees and Catherine Sutherland. How are you guys doing? Good. Hi. How are you? Thanks for having oh, us. Great. Thank you. We, Terry made it on time today. So how are you doing, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> Just a tad bit late. <laughs> <laughs> doing great and gary you oh exceptionally well thank you thank you awesome awesome I your name crime, terry and gary that's great cool. <laughs> <laughs> actually his name is gerald but he uh changed it just so he knows my name, name. So, yeah, he... <laughs> <laughs> cool. i was right gonna line, so yeah all right there you go <laughs> what did you say i didn't hear you I said I wasn't going to change it to Harold, so he figured he'd change it to Gary. So. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be one bad joke after another, isn't it? Right. I've, got a, I've got an enormous amount of dad jokes, too, so anytime <laughs> you want me to break into those, I can. That's 50% of our show, so. Right. <laughs> so let's, uh, actually, let's, let's start off talking about your guys' show. You have a, a new show called Super Chat with Kat and Nakia. Uh, what, what brought this guy about for you guys? Well, you know, we have a YouTube channel called Power Rangers Playback, and um, that came about when we were at a con in Scotland, and we were right next to, um, I always forget their Troy, name. Troy Baker and Nolan, and they're voiceover actors, and they were best friends at the time, um, and they just had this this line, and, and I didn't know that they were voiceover or, or what they had done, but we discovered that they had a YouTube channel where they play video games, and we were like, I gosh, we should do a YouTube channel. And so we sat there and we thought about, well, what would we do? And so what are we asked all the time, which our fans always ask us about what we're doing, uh, what we were doing in episode 399 on Power Rangers. Rangers. Oh. Yes. So we were like, let's watch the, let's watch our episodes and other episodes on Power Rangers. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what we were thinking during that time, what we were doing. And so we start off with a Power Rangers playback. And uh, now we have, besides watching playback episodes, we have a game show, we have a, a cook-off, we have um, live guests. And then from there, we started Super Chat. And I'll let Kat explain yes. that one. Um, we did. We have skits, too. We yes, started skits, skits. too. Um, and that was funny how that all came about because um, we had originally just wanted to watch our episodes and do like a commentary on it. And we started getting copyright claims. So we had to think a little bit out of the box and come up with new content. And it's actually turned out to be a blessing because our fans love all the, the different elements of our show now. Um, and I listen to a lot of podcasts. And so I said to Kia, we, we talk all the time about all kinds of things. And we have both have very unique perspectives. I'm not from this country. She's... Um, I'm not from this planet. I'm not from this planet. I'm from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway we just thought people might like we could talk about life we can talk about life beyond power rangers and kind of expand our audience um beyond the power ranger world and just two friends that love each other and and are going through life together and kind of give that perspective um so we came up with you know on our youtube channel we do this little super chat dance and we thought well superheroes that chat we can kind of come up with that. We do have the dance. So we just thought we'll call it Super Chat with Kat and Nakia. And that's kind of how it evolved. And um, it's been really well received. We've been really happy with um, it. I think it's going to appeal to, and bring more women into our, into our lives because we have a, a very male heavy fandom with Power Rangers. Um, so yeah, so we just want to reach more people and, and make people happy. That's our, that's our goal. Yeah, Power Rangers has a huge fandom. I mean, uh, so you think a mass majority of it is is male oriented? Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, when we when we look at our um, you know our insights on our fan pages, the majority I would say probably 80, 75 to eighty percent of our audience is male um, between the ages of like twenty nine to fifty, mm -hmm. and um, and then we have females too, but it's very male heavy. I, I would say so. We would like to expand and, and you know to reach more women too. So. And we'd also like to um, you know Power Ranger playback is about Power Rangers and different elements of Power Rangers, Power Ranger trivia, skits, and so forth. And our podcast 
focuses more on us as people, our lives, mm-hmm. as mothers, as friends, uh, you know, the, the trials that we go through. I mean, we, we talk from the heart because mm-hmm. I think that, that that's what misses, um, it's missed a lot in this industry where people share their honesty mm-hmm. about their weight issues or how they felt when they went in on an audition or continued auditions, you know, just the truth, the mm-hmm. truth. Yeah. I, I see I see Power Rangers as being a real tight knit family. I've, we've had several Power Rangers at the show, and Kia included, and uh, and it seems like you guys' friendship just supersedes all of the other friendships in the uh, mm-hmm. uh, in, in the Power Ranger community. So, how, how did that come about for you guys? The, did you guys hit it off right away, or was it did yeah. it take a little time? Or did no, we did connect immediately. Um, I was in Nikia's uh, screen test when she first was auditioning for the show, and. There was three girls that it was in the final um, screen test and her and I just, we had great chemistry on camera and, um, and I just, I just immediately liked her and, um, and, you know, being the only two girls on the show, I think that we really connected that way. Um, and I was relatively new to the show by when Nakia came on and I think I'd only been on maybe three months before her maybe a little bit more, I think like six, six months months before. So I was still pretty new to it as well. Um, and we just, we just became the best of friends. And then when we left the show, I stopped her. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so, you know, we've watched, we've, we've been through all these different stages of life together. You know, I was there when she had her first child. Um, she was there there, when she had yours. Yeah. Yeah. She was there for mine. We've we've just been at all, every major stage of each other's life. And, and I wouldn't want to live without her. I can't imagine living without her. (laughs) Same here. We're literally three days apart, born the same year. So, you know, that's kind of says something too. Yeah. Yeah. We just, we've just, I don't know. We've just Just hit it off. And, and, you know, the, the funny, the interesting thing, I won't say funny. The interesting thing is we've heard about, you know, other girls on Power Rangers and not too many had that relationship. But Sierra, yeah. Sierra and Emma are the only ones. That's not Christina. That's Christina mm-hmm. are the only ones that I know of that had really tight, really tight um, mm-hmm. friendship and continue to have that friendship. Sometimes, you know, it could be <laughs> very chaotic on set, and there's competitive, uh, competitive yeah. nature between girls. But it was, it wasn't like that with us. No, I mean because we look so much alike. It's, it's been very <laughs> challenging because we go up. Thank you. Summer all the time <laughs> speaking of first children uh, uh we had sierra and monroe too before and she, just Aww. a wonderful girl and yeah. i heard she's gonna have her first child here like any, any day. day now so any day congratulations now. to her so yes yeah. she's um she's a little cutie pie and it's been fun watching her so i was in new zealand with her um when we filmed the the um this the legacy episode and you know, she was still so such a young, like little single girl and, you know, dating different people. And we were, I was talking to her about, oh, you know, do you think you'll ever have kids? And it now just like cutting forward four years, she's like completely in love and settled down and having a baby. And it's just cute watching her grow up. Yeah. <laughs> so. well, I think, I think Power Rangers does an amazing job of vetting their, their superstars here because uh, I mean, everyone I've met so far, you, you guys have been just great. Oh, thank you. It's a, it's a pretty, we have a pretty good group of people. I think they, they're all, we are really a family. Yeah. And it's um, most, most of the ranges that I've met, like moving, you know, we meet a lot of them now because it's still going. Um, they're all pretty good people. There's very few that I would say, Ooh, yeah, you know, there are, there are a couple in the bunch. There's where a we're couple. Like, <laughs> there are a couple. But now, yeah. <laughs> That I even say, say what now? <laughs> um, but for the most part, ninety percent of them are great. Okay. Yes, that's a pretty good percentage. Yes. How's that? How's that in wrestling, Terry? About the same? About ninety oh, percent. No, of them. we hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go out afterwards and drink together. That's the only thing that brings us together is beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, some of the Power Rangers like that too. <laughs> no i'm kidding uh, a lot of people uh, uh a lot of guys and girls uh, get along in wrestling you know so yeah it's probably about the same about 90 percent. but you have people and it's very competitive um i think it's um more a team effort now than back then because back in the day everybody was worried about their spot so they would you know hold people down um even if they were past their prime so um you know a lot of them 
it, it was unfortunate because at the end of the day, it hurt business more than it helped business. So mm, I used to be an avid watcher. Oh, um, really? Debbie. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> when I was younger, I have two brothers. And okay. so every Saturday, Did the weekend, we used, I don't know, Hulk Hogan. We used yeah. to watch Hulk Hogan. That's yeah. his favorite. <laughs> yeah. We used to watch Hulk Hogan all the time. Um, and we would pretend to be the wrestlers and he then was wrestle such each other. A great personality, like he really took wrestling to a, a different level. I think when right, yeah. like that was superstars. The like Hulk and, and um, what was his name? Andre the Giant. Oh yep. yeah, yeah. Andre the Giant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's the great thing about um, like YouTube. Uh, you can uh, there's a lot of footage you didn't see um, from the 70s and eight early 80s and before it hit that first boom. And you can go back and watch guys like Andre the Giant. And when I was growing up, I, I watched Andre the Giant, but it was in the late 80s. And, uh, you know, when he was younger, boy, he could move like a cruiserweight. Yeah. So he was a lot leaner and stuff. But, uh, yeah, and watching some of the old footage and some of the stuff he used to do, it just blew me away. So that's a great thing about YouTube and, you know, uh, with wrestling. So Yeah. yeah. So do you guys, uh, as far as when you guys get, like he was saying, the new, the newer generation stuff, do you guys counsel the newer generation at all? Or do they ask you for advice about being on Power Rangers and what to expect? Or do you guys kind of keep up with it at all? Or is it? Well, I don't keep up with it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I watched one of the newer episodes because she had gone back and I had some friends that had gone back. So I watched that episode. But once I left the show, and the, because of the way that we left the show, I was like, Nyeh! that's it yeah. for me. I was like, that's a wrap. Peace. Love you. Mean it. Um, and then I didn't watch anything else afterward until she had gone back. Um, and then when my boys, you know, a few years back when I think it was Samurai, Power Rangers Samurai, I showed my boys like um, a little bit of Power Rangers just so that they could get a feel. They weren't feeling it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> But no, and, and they don't normally ask for anything. Um, but what we've learned and just, just in having some of the, well, we just had a, a newer ranger on, one that's just finished his season, Beast Morphers, how much they look up to the original rangers, the rangers from like the 90s. Like he was in such awe of Austin, which yes. was just, it was so, so adorable. Cute. Yeah, like they, they're set. Yeah, it, uh, like sometimes you forget that, People watched you, they're, they're rangers, they're in their 20s now. So that's when, you know, we were on the show 25 years ago. So they actually watched our episodes growing up. Yeah. And um, it's it's really interesting to see their expressions and to see how what they think about the earlier generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, kinda, it's kinda neat though. To, I mean, it's gonna go on forever, it seems like. So, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't see an end in sight. They're gonna, they're gonna keep going no matter, no matter, no matter what. Parking, yeah. 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 So, you guys plan on hopefully getting to go into more future episodes? Is that something that you keep open? You know, your options open for? Or? Well, you know, I I would I always hope that they'll bring people back and kind of honor their character, but that wasn't how what it was when I went back. It was really yeah. just like we were just a little flavoring in the in the mix, and they didn't really do anything with our characters or have any connection to our storyline or anything. So I think if I was to go back, I, it would be, I would want it to be more like, it's for Pat, like for my character, or, or I'm a mentor or a mother or something to the younger rangers. I just think, I didn't, I didn't really think I want to do another cameo kind of. Right. So. so I don't follow it as that much. I mean, I watched it when my boys were younger, Mighty Morphins and Turbo and stuff, but is it like a, is it like a universe, like a multiverse, like, like yeah. a, like the Marvel Universe is, so you guys are always going to exist in that yes. universe? Okay. So when they start, Boom Comics started doing the comics, they opened up all this kind of fan fiction ideas that, that people had always wondered. Like, what if Tommy had not returned good? You know, what if um, Jason and Trini were to get, like, they kind of explore all these different ideas um, and put it in the comics. And they've combined, like, Nakia's um, storyline in the comics, uh, she is, what is it, Time Force? Yeah, yeah. Time, so, Time Force. So is the Zeo and Time Force, like, and, 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 more and yeah, so they've kind of blending them together um, and having different, uh, different universes, I guess. So 
Um, I think that they have tried to somewhat incorporate that into the show when they do these legacy episodes. Right. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's they could do a lot more with it, but it seems like they should more. because as far as I see from fans, the Mighty Morphin, the Turbo, the Zeal, that's where everyone seems their fandom seems to come from. It seems like that's the, those are the main, you know, the main strong points and they yeah. don't do enough with them anymore. So I know it's funny because when at conventions and stuff, it's it's always the little kids, isn't it? Yeah. The little ones that come up to us and they, and we say, what's your favorite episode? And they always say like Zia or, or Mighty Morphin or they, they don't say, you know, Beast Morphers. Beast Morphers. <laughs> and, and right. I mean, it's surprising to me, but maybe that'll change now because it's not on Netflix anymore. Maybe they'll, that will change. But. Yeah. Do you think there's been a shift in how it's shot, how it's filmed, uh, the storylines, or do you think it's, it's, you know, more campy, less campy? Do you think, you know, what do you think the problem is as far as now goes, as far as fans really going back towards the earlier years and not recent, more recent ones? The nostalgia of the, yeah. you know, the original, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I think in most, in most television shows or genres and so forth, when you always go back to the original and you compare everything to the original. And unfortunately, I don't watch the new, the new episodes. Um, I've watched, I watched obviously Sierra's, uh, mm -hmm. which was newer. When we do the review, then we get to, you know, we're exposed to the new ones. So when, in seeing the new ones, I thought, um, I didn't understand. <laughs> there were a lot of things that I didn't, I didn't understand. Their power, their power cards, they have like, yeah. I didn't understand. Sierra said like 50 power cards. They put a card inside their morpher and then they get the help from something. I don't know. Yeah. So I, it was harder for me to follow. Like, I think I would have to watch more than one episode in order to understand. But, you know, everybody has their own favorites. I think that um, the most popular is Mighty Morphin. I think Time Force is, is Time pretty, Force is popular. pretty popular yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, I also think, though, that it's... Um, the reason that it maybe isn't clicking as much is that in the in the earlier seasons, there was a lot more character development. The, the, we, people got attached to the characters, not the, the, color. Not the color, yeah. And I think once once we left and they started changing it every season, they, mm -hmm. they people didn't have as much uh, invested in, in the show. It was more yeah. about selling the toys. Um, <laughs> Yeah, speaking of toys, do you guys collect your own toys? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that, it's cool to have an action figure of yourself. Yeah, I have an action figure and a Barbie doll. So yeah, I have, I have them both. I, you know, I, I voice the character of Nikki in Barbie's Life in the Dream House. So I get to say I'm, I she am looks a Barbie like doll too. and I am an action figure. You so. you're, you're a Disney princess. Thank you. Huh? You're a Disney princess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll roll with that. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Terry, right? I always wanted my uh, my princess action figure. Well, not action figure. Oh, you can pull that off. Yeah. You can pull that off. Gary and I both. <laughs> <laughs> we were just yeah. having. Mine's right. not very attractive. <laughs> no, I noticed that in wrestling too. Um, he said, you know, there was more character development, and um, you know, I think probably about fifteen years ago, it, it seemed like they started moving angles and, and matches quicker. And if you missed a couple weeks, you'd be totally out of the loop, mm -hmm. you know? And if you're a fan tuning in, you're like, wait, what happened here and what happened there? And sometimes they'll start something, they won't finish it. Um, and it's not because of an injury. And I think a lot of fans, it turns them away. Like back, you know, in the late eighties and the nineties, you know, they would nurse something and you'd learn about that wrestler and that wrestler's personality or character. Yeah. Um, and, and it was, it was fun and it was easier to follow, you know? And I think, I don't know if it's uh, writers or, or bookers would they, I don't know what their thought process was, was let's hurry up and throw this out there and, and hopefully it'll stick. Maybe that was the, you know, but it, it sometimes it, it just, you tune in and you're like, wait, you know, I can't catch up with this. So I'm not going to watch it next week. So I think it's, it hurts the product more than it helps the product. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I, I think it's attention span too. I think they try to shoot stuff off so quick because kids just don't, you know, have the time or want to watch something to develop anything. They just want, you know, now, 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 now. Yeah. So I think it's kind of harder to make the storyline, you know, yeah. longer and drawn out to where, 
you actually get to know the characters or the wrestlers or something. I think it it hurts in the in the long run, I believe. But I think that's sort of you know people don't know how to watch TV anymore, kind of thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. They want to stream everything right now and get it done. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you get so, gratification. That's so that's true. true. Our our patience level has definitely. It's like, yeah, I, I, I actually will, will wait until a whole season is done so that I can oh, watch I know. all of the other yeah. done that too. I don't <laughs> want to wait till the end. I don't want to wait okay. till next week. Game of Thrones drove me crazy with that. Yeah. I'll be like, they've left me on a cliffhanger. I have to wait a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> then you got to watch the last two or three episodes before the next one comes out. So you remember what happened last year? Yes, yes. But that's the way that we grew up. We grew up an episode a week. I know. So that, that but now good. it's just, yeah. Everything's just much faster paced. Instant gratification. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys have both been in what? Zeo, Turbo, and Mighty Morphin? All, both, all three of them? She's been in all three. I was, well, I stepped foot in Mighty Morphin. I was in the last episode of Mighty Morphin, but, but, I, but I never put on the, the yellow suit in Mighty Morphin. Okay. Um, and I was in Zeo and Turbo. So Zeo and Turbo then, which, which one was your favorite as far as like the shoot? What did you have? Did, did you have more fun? Did you enjoy it? Did you think it was a better season? Both of you. Oh, darling, I enjoyed darling. I enjoyed them both for different reasons. Zeo, because I felt like my character had more storylines. You could probably answer this for me because I <laughs> have said it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I felt like in Zeo, I was a new character. They explored my character a little bit more. I had more storylines. Um, so I really loved that. Turbo, I loved that we got to fight because in Zeo, our stuntmen did everything. Oh, okay. Turbo, uh, you would see us fighting in civilian civilian clothes, and that was the most fun. When we were preparing for the movie, we had six weeks of fight training. I mean, all of the guys are black belts in, you know, different karate and jiu-jitsu and all of that stuff. They're amazing. They are. Um, but it was so much fun, the, the fight stunt training for the six weeks, and then the fighting in the movie, and then the fighting in, in Turbo. That was so much fun for me. I could do that all day, every day. So yeah. that's what I loved about Turbo. Um. For me, I, I think Zio had really great storylines. Um, I loved being, e I was evil on Mighty Morphin when I came onto the show. So I really enjoyed the, being evil before I became good. That I really liked that. Um, Everyone loves to be the heel. Yeah, it's fun <laughs> to be bad. Um, and then the Turbo, same thing. I really enjoyed that we got to do civilian fighting because they took all of that away in Zio. Um, we were doing so many PSAs towards the end of Mighty Morphin because kids were hitting each other <laughs> and hurting each other at school. We don't hit people, just aliens. Yes. Um, and so um, so we, we didn't get to do any of that in Turbo. And it was, I mean, in Zio. So it was kind of a bummer. Um, but we had really good writers in Zio, I think. Um, in Turbo, it kind of shifted. So, well, Turbo is where they started. They start removing the whole cast. Like we were the last um, cast that was there for... I think longevity. Yeah. 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 And then after we left, they start replacing the cast like every season or every other season mm -hmm. or something like that. Every so. season. Yeah. So the people that replaced us on Turbo um, did in space. So they, I think they did like 10 episodes of Turbo and then went into, into space. And then after that, it was every, every season was different cast. Yeah. I wonder why they, why they decided to do that. Why would they, I mean, because, it was working, it seemed like. Because people kept leaving. Like people, if you if you only have people for a certain amount of time, they are contracted and they're not going to ask for more. And I just think they just wanted to keep rotating it out because then the cast doesn't get too big for their boots and ask for more and people don't get attached to them. And, you know, what, what a lot of people don't know is uh, Power Rangers is non-union. Oh, okay. so non-union, you know what non-union can do. They can work you until you spit blood. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a union guy so uh, yeah so you know it was so our first until he spits yeah. blood <laughs> <laughs> we we worked our butts off you yeah. know and um I, you know we could tell stories about turnaround times for the movie we'd wrap we'd finish at three o'clock in the morning and have to be back on set at six three hours of rest and they're not paying for a hotel like there's some some really outlandish things that you could hear about so to be perfectly honest, there were a lot of actors that were not happy. Um, 
with the pay. And I remember when we were on the show, Friends was negotiating a million dollar contract. We weren't even making a for, for episode to, to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I think it was fair for the actors to ask for a bump. Like, how could they not? I mean, when they saw, so they saw like, uh, you know, Saban is making millions of dollars oh, off yeah. their faces. Billions. With billions. <laughs> faces and their, their likeness was, that was signed all the way. I mean, to this day, they still, I mean, I just had a toy come out. They use my face and, and I can't do anything about that. I don't get anything for it. I had to buy the toys myself. I don't you guys get, don't get comp, anything comped at all? No. 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 So... You know, it, you, these these actors were being were work. I mean, the the first actors did all their own stunts in the very beginning too. So they were working sixteen hour days, then doing a pit, live appearances, um, and they just wanted what was fair, and and it wasn't in the cards for them. So they just got rid of them like that and replaced them. Yeah. So and that kind of set precedence for yes. the the rest of the seasons. Like yes. if you ask for something, then you're out. Yeah, because oh. they saw that even though people were upset that the first three actors had left, they embraced the new ones quite quickly. So that showed, oh, well, they weren't that attached. So clearly, we were able to just replace them. So, yeah. So it was. It's kind of brutal. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's interesting. I I didn't know. I just assumed that Hollywood movies and Hollywood TV series they were most they were all union. I didn't know that they were actually non-union, especially some of that caliber of uh, you know success. Really? Right. No, you know, actually, when we were on the show, right when we left the show, the union came in and forced Saban to become union. So oh. after we left, the next season was union for a hot minute. And oh. then uh, Disney bought, and so they were still union up into Time Force. Mm -hmm. So that was like 2007. Yeah, so it was like uh, In Space, uh, Lost Galaxy, Wild time time force so three seasons after we left was union but it was a modified union contract they didn't get anything for merchandising nope. um they just got a little bit more pay and they did get residuals but it was very still very minimal yeah. like bottom of the barrel sag contract and then saban bought bought it back and they became non-union again and they moved them to new zealand and that's where they film now and they're still oh, okay. non-union so they're not they don't shoot in hollywood then no, no. Okay. It's all in New Zealand. And, you know, they, they're very smart. They choose up and coming actors that are, it's most of the, um, the people, it's their first job. Yeah. And um, so they don't really know, like, they don't know any, any better. It's uh, like, I remember the first SAG job I did after Power Rangers, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. like, this is really nice. <laughs> like, I have a trailer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh there's hours? I, I could leave after six? And still paid for the it was yeah. it was crazy and yeah food. yeah I actually got food <laughs> the, the, the most important thing yes <laughs> and someone brought me water oh wow like yeah <laughs> it's like we were so our expectations were so low <laughs> yeah but you know I I know that we've said some negative things about Power Rangers but we have to also say that we wouldn't have Power Rangers playback mm -hmm. if we didn't have the experience on Power Rangers we mm -hmm. wouldn't have Super Chat we wouldn't have the fandom that we have. So, you know, there were a lot of negatives, but I feel like the convention world has become our residuals yes. because we don't get residuals for, right. even with it being on Netflix, nothing, nothing, no red no. cent, nothing. You don't um, get one of them 12 cent checks every once in a while or nothing like that? You know what? I did get, I did get like a $1.15 um, <laughs> because I think what they did was they used my voice on one of the one of those three seasons that was union. Yeah. Um, I probably made about ten dollars. Woo! Yes. Hold the phone. I'm making it, y'all. I, I actually make residuals because I did a few monster voices for them uh, after I left. Like Scott, had the our ADR director, had called me in to do some voices, and so I laugh because I get little like they're not very much right. like five dollars here and that, but it's still I get residuals from that, but not from being a ranger. <laughs> that's crazy you get yeah. more money for making a monster a monster sound than you do for being yeah. Yeah, yeah. a cat for years Bizarre. Bizarre. but you know we've both been blessed to do work since power rangers and um the interesting thing is that most people no matter what you do after power rangers they it don't care always comes back to power rangers i mean she's, always worked, be... 
she worked with Vincent D'Onofrio and Jennifer Lopez. She was in the cell. And yeah. um, no one cares. Uh, yeah, it was I brought pictures from that, and I think I've sold two <laughs> in the whole nine years of uh, being on convention scene. No one. There's some. I've had. I've had probably five people ask about like, oh, what was it like working in the cell? And it's so funny because that was such a a huge thing, and it's a cult film. Every no one give a crap about that. So, they like so, so Kat, what was it like working on the cell? <laughs> I get asked that all the time. <laughs> um, no, it was an it was an amazing SAG movie. <laughs> um, it was an amazing experience. I, I loved every second of it. I I was it was amazing, amazing. Uh, I loved the director. Um, I got to work with Vincent D'Onofrio and Vince Vaughn and J Lo and um, yeah, it was it was a, a very exciting time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm hogging you guys. Come on, Terry. What? Uh... Oh no, I'm just enjoying it. You guys, you guys have a great chemistry. You know. Oh, you, you thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should turn our show over to them. They can do right. <laughs> they they don't get into. Their audience, come, they can come and share the love with us. We'll just right, right, the right. love with us. <laughs> I, sent the, I sent these links to them. They're like, no expectations. I don't think they quite understood how low of expectations you know, that we actually have. <laughs> You know, we right. don't we don't rehearse we don't i don't yeah. know do any kind of like research we don't we like it very well obviously so yeah. we like it to be more natural and organic and let the converse conversation flow that's our gimmick anyways organic right. yeah <laughs> and sometimes gary will sometimes gary will turn heel on me so <laughs> yeah. i was good to be the bad guy right cat yeah, yeah. But speaking of cat, your accent's a little different. So, yeah. um, is it not from this? You're yeah. Australian, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, how did an Australian girl become a Power Ranger? Um, I actually auditioned in Australia. So they had filmed the first movie in Australia, and Amy Jo had expressed interest in leaving. She wanted to move on and and do more things with her career, and so they auditioned in America and. They, I don't know why, I mean, with the millions of girls in America, why they felt like they couldn't find someone, but they decided they wanted to have, maybe bring in an international flavor to the show. So um, the producers loved Australia. So they came back and I just auditioned. I didn't know any, I didn't know what Power Rangers was. I didn't know. I just, all I knew was that it was a, a children's show that was going to be filming in Hollywood, which I was like, oh my gosh, what an amazing opportunity to get to go to Hollywood, you know? Um, and I did three auditions and the final one was with the producer and about three weeks later that he called him, the casting director called me to tell me what I was, I was the one. So, um, you know, Amy Jo, I mean, maybe it was that they wanted someone really opposite of Amy Jo. Um, I mean, we couldn't be on further ends of the spectrum. She's tiny little gymnast. She comes up to about here on me. Um, she's dark hair. I'm blonde. I'm Australian. She's American. Um, her character was very valley girl, bubbly kind of um, character. And my character was more serene, motherly, nurturing kind of character. So um, I think maybe because she was so popular, they were hoping to go with something a little more, a little different to, to help right. people accept it. Because the pink ranger was very popular. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the iconic kind of ranger you would think, pink and red. And, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's pretty, yeah. pretty cool. And what about yeah. you, Nakia? What what got you into, into the Power Rangers? Were you were you guys both aspiring actresses before this, or did this was this like your this the first thing you did? Or I have been acting since I was five years old in my mother and dad's living room. <laughs> <laughs> you prepared your whole life for this. You better share the underoos. I, I do. I used you to run it. around. Do you guys remember what underoos are? Did you have? Yeah. Oh, okay. I used to have my Wonder Woman underoos on and I would have a belt and I was Wonder Woman and I would swing it around and hit my brothers with it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I used to watch the Carol Burnett show and um, Red Fox, his show. And I just oh, yeah. loved comedy. Red and so Fox, I would yeah. put up skits inside of my living room. I'd force my brother to be a part of it. And um, I just started performing when I was little. Wasn't getting paid for it. So when I auditioned for Power Rangers, I was a junior at UCLA in the film, uh, um, 
in the School of Film, Television, and Theater. And um, I get this audition. I did not know. Hold on. I'm, I'll brag for her because she's not going to tell you. She was the only African-American female freshman accepted that year. And there was a lot of people that auditioned. And how many? There was 50 kids in, 50 the, accepted. in accepted. And she was one of them. That's Very awesome. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just keep going just <laughs> um so I didn't know what Power Rangers was I just knew that it was an audition and you know I wanted to do film and television like that's what I wanted to do and so I didn't know I was replacing anyone they told me to wear yellow I learned my lines I remember going there did I you have yellow or did you have to go and buy some I had to go buy a t-shirt yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had to go buy a yellow t-shirt that people really yeah wear. I remember yeah. I remember the t-shirt and I remember the jeans that I wore too that is so funny I remember my audition I remember going inside of the room with Julie Ashton and I remember there was a television standing on the side she was sitting on the couch over here and I was standing right here facing her and I remember for this audition I got to the point where I was like, I'm just done. Cause I was putting too much energy into each audition that I was like, I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna do what I need to do. And then I'm going to literally throw my sides, my script behind me and I'm gonna take off afterward. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. I did the audition. I got into my car, my little Honda Prelude, <laughs> 1993 Honda Prelude, threw my sides behind me and I took off and I didn't think about it anymore. And then a couple of weeks later I get, get a call back and I was like, oh, that's cool. I go to the callback and then I get another callback and I was like, oh my gosh. And then the nervousness start happening. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I could be a series regular. What does that mean? Um, and then I had five auditions and you know, my screen test, like Kat said, I met her and I remember sitting inside of the lobby with the other two girls. Mm -hmm. One of them had been on the show before. So she thought she would intimidate me Ooh. by saying how she had been on the show and she knew Karen Ashley who was the Yellow Ranger before me and how the producers liked her and everything. And I just remember looking at her like, I don't give a damn. Like, <laughs> you want a cookie? For real, seriously. I just, yeah. I remember just looking at her just like, because mm -hmm. it was down to the two of us for the final interview. And I just decided to go in there and just to be confident with my final interview with him. And I told him to make the right choice because he was telling me that Amy, oh, he asked me what my birthday was. Shiki Levy had asked me what my birthday was. And I was like, October 21st. He was like, oh, they have a lot of October birthdays. Catherine's birthday is in October. Amy Joe's birthday is in October. I said, then you need to just hire another October birthday. <laughs> and, um, and he did. Yes, he yeah. did. Yeah, he yes, did. He did. So you got the job because you were born in October. That's yes. it. That's, That's it. Not about talent. Not yeah, at all. Nothing, nothing about how great you were. Just <laughs> That's because it was October 21st. That's it. You know what's funny about her is that she's she's talking about her as a kid and everything and, and how she watched Carol Burnett's show, but Nakia loves reality TV shows. And she she's a total, like everywhere we go, she watches people and she creates all these characters. And and she's she loves to come up, you have to come up with a nickname for them. She loves to give people nicknames. Do you know what she calls me, her best friend? You have Chicken lips. <laughs> Chicken lips. Or, or, or pickle knees. That is the most recent one. Oh, those are so endearing. So what would you like to, to name these gentlemen, Nakia? I'm kind of scared. I know. So yeah, maybe you can just name Terry. Yeah, we'll name Terry. That's all right. I, I've, 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 oh, she's just, I, I gotta hear one now. She's feeling the pressure now. Yes. <laughs> well, if you think of one by the end of the uh, the interview, you know, go ahead and shout it out. <laughs> Because well, 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 my friends and family, they all know that it's a term, a term yeah. of endearment. So you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. If it's, I'm like porcupine knuckles and stuff yes. like that, you just have to know that it's, it's love. <laughs> it's not because you look like a porcupine or your knuckles <laughs> or anything. So, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be offended now if I don't get a nickname by the end of the show. <laughs> she'll, come up, she'll come up with one. Don't you worry. Oh, I know. <laughs> But so you guys, what else you guys have going on right now? I know you got the, 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 you know, the shows, which hopefully we'll get back going, you know, strong pretty soon. And then you got the, uh, the podcast, the YouTube channel, anything else going on right now? Well, I play, um, I have a role on a Nickelodeon show called Danger Force. I play um, Angela Macklin, which happens to be the mother of two superhero kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
How fantastic. Full circle. Yes, full circle. So I've done, I have a recurring role in there. Um, it's, uh, it's their first season. Uh, they actually should be wrapping, I think, this week. Um, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. The cast is, it's a spinoff from the show Henry Danger, which okay. lasted for like six years. Um, so there's four superheroes. Two of them have to happen to be my, my children. They're paternal twins. Of course, you know, the parents don't know that the kids have superpowers. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's a comedy, of course, and I love comedy. So yeah, I've been doing that. Still doing commercials and, and other shows. I did a, a role on Sydney to the Max, which is a Disney show. Actually, these are the first Disney and Nickelodeon shows I've ever done. Yeah, that's which is, crazy. Is, yeah, yeah. The, the only the only ones I attested for a Nickelodeon show a couple years back, but those are the only shows that most of the other shows that I've done have been like you know on CBS or ABC Netflix, or Netflix, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's ironic. Um, oh. We have a couple of things that we're working on which we can't share yet. Oh. But, um, but yes, there's some. There's definitely some things that we've been hard at work with, and um, are excited to share when we can. But yeah, right now they have to manifest. They have to. Yes. You know, you speak too soon about it, and then it just. <laughs> yeah. Right. No one thinks that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now I, I've got a couple questions. Now yeah. a lot of people they get they get upset if uh you know if you're from australia and then they go oh are you from england do you get upset or no you know new zealanders do that a lot new zealanders do stand to be called australian which i don't understand they just right. say we're beneath them or something <laughs> um i don't i think i get always people think i'm either south african or um or english because i've been here for 26 years now so my accent is a little has changed a lot over the years um, but no, I'm, I'm not offended at all. I, I mean, it's hard to tell with some people. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, people I from English, I actually say, oh, thank you. I, say, <laughs> kind of I would just roll with it. I'd be like, yeah, I'm from, uh, um, Sydney, England. <laughs> See if they figure it out. <laughs> so, and, and then is this a myth, but I heard because it's a lower hemisphere, the toilet water goes counterclockwise down oh, there. That's that amazing. Amazing. What's that? Went straight down. It didn't do any swishy thing. It just oh, sucked okay. down. Really? Yeah. Um, but we do have, we've always had, Australia's very earth conscious. So we've always had like the half flush and the full flush. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. But Wait. no, it doesn't go the opposite way. That's, that's okay. Okay, no. I have a question for you guys. You guys pet, are... No pet kangaroos or no, no shrimps on the Barbie, none of that? Shrimps on the barbie, yes. Shrimps on the barbie, okay. Prawns. We don't call them shrimp. We call them prawns. So, oh, okay. why, so where did shrimps on the barbie come from then? America. Oh, you guys in Americans. The Foster's <laughs> commercials. <laughs> uh, so you guys are good friends and you've been to each other's houses and stuff before, right? Yes. I have a question for you. If you were to come to, say, Nakia or Kat would come to each other's house and you saw that the toilet paper was under, would you change the rule to over? <laughs> no 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 okay We're wrong with it as long as it you works know and it I, comes out you know what i do okay. i do this is if if i'm at someone's house and you rip the toilet paper and it's jaggered i'll take that piece off so it's straight okay oh, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't just you. take it off and change it from to under or no. to over instead of under okay That's a little you hear that terry you do, do that? you do that gary? <laughs> i did that in gary's house <laughs> <laughs> thanks for calling me out gary Took my wife an hour to figure out how to use the toilet paper. Toilet right. paper Gary. Toilet paper Terry. <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> toilet paper Terry. CPG Gary. <laughs> CPG. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. The real TPG. Yes. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Are you a little OCD? OCD? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've got a um some corks, you know, but it doesn't control my life or whatever. Like in the morning, I always got to get up and make the bed first thing. Usually that's not because I don't like them. Uh, I like a clean or a nicely made bed when I jump in at night. Um, but it also teaches me discipline. You know, if I start my day out with discipline, I'm more disciplined to eat better and go to the gym. And, you know, I do love my lawn. So I'll cut my, well, I don't cut my grass anymore, but I'll water it. I'll fertilize it. I'll grass seed all that stuff. So very yeah. nice. 
There, yeah. is a, there was a, a military um, speech I heard. This man was speaking about things to make you successful. He had a college. I can't remember what, what his name was, but he, what was one of the things he talked about is every day when you get out of bed, you should make your bed because it sets you, you are starting your day productively and it's mm -hmm. helping you have order when you make your bed. Like things are in order and it makes your mind think that you can function better or something. I thought that was interesting. Uh, cool. a whole list of stuff like that yeah well I'll i can't do that my wife would get mad because she's still sleeping oh <laughs> you're making the bed while she's yeah. just Put it on. pulling the covers out <laughs> tucking her in i um um I, I did a speech before a wrestling show and it was a small independent wrestling show and uh i i finished off with telling everybody to make their own beds right uh -huh. and so the next day they started Facebooking me messages. Sorry. I'm so their sorry. Bed I had a visual of Gary tucking his, his wife in while she's still sleeping. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Trying to kill me? Right. That's hilarious. No, but okay. anyway, they, they started sending me pictures of uh, their beds made, and then they put the action my action figure on the bed. Or like a replica title. One guy, <laughs> his cat was on the bed cleaning itself, and he took a picture oh, of it. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Go <laughs> figure there. <laughs> yeah, it was actually pretty funny. So. Well, it's getting close to our quitting time. We're a, we're a, we're a union shop here. We don't work past five. So, <laughs> <laughs> but we definitely loved having you on. You know, we love you, Nikia. We loved having you into the to Monroe, and it was great meeting you, Cat. And you guys got to let us know where you can be found. Let the fans know what's you know your, your social media links and everything like that. Um, on Instagram, it's um, Nikia Baris, Catherine underscore Sutherland, or Power Rangers Playback. So there's three places to find us. Yeah. Um, same on on Facebook, and uh, we have a Twitter account which is Power Playback. Um, what else? TikTok. TikTok now. We're, We're on TikTok. TikTok. Oh, We're on five days. Yeah. TikTok. So, TikTok's a whole world. another animal. Oh my gosh, it's really weird what people like on TikTok. But anyways, right. we do have TikTok. My daughter is educating us on how to use TikTok. And, and I say, what? Oh, shall I do this? She goes, no, lame, don't do that. <laughs> um, so yes, we have TikTok, which is Power Rangers Playback. We have um, YouTube. our YouTube channel, Power Rangers Playback. We have Patreon, Power Rangers Playback. And we have, you, well, YouTube, you can join our team. Um, we have a Patreon account and we also have yes. a YouTube account, which is Power Rangers playback. So yes. and oh, and then tiers. now and then our podcast, of course, which is Super Chat, Super Chat with Kat and Nakia. <laughs> That's oh, great. We don't talk like that. We need to practice something. I know, like right? It's, it's so <laughs> professional. Right, right. Great <laughs> chemistry. A song, a dance, everything. <laughs> you know. yeah, I did want to see the dance, the, your your happy dance, but I don't know. Your happy dance. Dance. So if you if you put in a super chat in YouTube. We go like this. Oh, Gary, Gary, super chat, raise it up high. <laughs> yeah. We're going to steal some of this stuff, Terry. Right. Yeah. Right. Come on, give us a sample. Right. Yeah. I don't know what to say, but yay. Hi, Gary, come on. Oh, hi. Ooh, there ooh. you go. Man. So, <laughs> so we have Tuck and Gary. Because you touch in your wife. Tuck yeah. in Gary. And we have TPG. TP, TP Gary. I mean, Terry. Terry. Yes. Yeah. He said TPG. TPG. The real TPG. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, I thought that was TPG. Oh. Oh, I'm man. Paper Terry. Toilet oh, paper Terry. Yeah, that's definitely tall paper Terry. Terry. Okay. Okay. So that. Okay. Yeah. Tuck in Gary. Tuck in Gary. Because that visual of him using. Making the bed I've been called a lot. I've been called a lot worse. So I, like, I assure you, nobody will use a T when it comes to Tuck and Gary. I've been called a lot worse. That's, that's going to be a lot of confusion. A lot of confusion with Tuck and Gary. Gary's wife, and I could see it. Oh my gosh, I could see her being like, "What in the heck?" <laughs> yeah, that's where I got that eye from. <laughs> but I was, like I said, it was it was wonderful having you guys on. Uh, you guys, you guys are great together. So. Keep it up. Good luck. Um, Terry? Yes, thank you once again. You guys got great chemistry. So. Thank you. Thank you for having us. One day we hope our friendship evolves into something like that. 
It won't, Gary. It won't. Gary <laughs> <laughs> Not if you don't stop touching my toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank Many you. We love to have you. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. Tune in next week. We got pro wrestler Zach Gowan. And uh, we appreciate you guys stopping by. Make sure if you like our content, subscribe, like, share, download, etc. Do all that stuff on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Twitter, I don't know. TikTok for Terry. Right. <laughs> but uh, all right, we're out. Easy, next time. Easy tuck in, Gary. Tuck in, DPT. Right. Toilet That's paper, a, Terry. I kind of like toilet paper, I know Terry. you got the better name. Right, I actually did. did. <laughs> Was it tuck in, uh, Gary, or tuck in, Gary? Tuck in, Gary. Oh, Which okay. be confused a lot, I think. Right. I think Dave's right. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave.